ketones driving stem cell production? A new MIT study looks into this question. Welcome to the HVMN Research Roundup. Today, we're going to be talking about ketones and how they play a role for intestinal health and their role in promoting stem cell growth. Let's set the stage here with some quick context on our gut, our intestines, and what stem cells really, really mean. Our gut is responsible for digesting food, absorbing nutrients, and serving as a barrier to prevent harmful bacteria from entering the body through our food. It's a highly dynamic and active organ, and our intestinal lining is actually replaced every few days by shedding old cells for new ones. This means that the lining needs to be continuously regenerated through stem cells. Stem cells are a super trendy topic today as people experiment and speculate them for all sorts of use cases. You have people talking about them using uh, stem cells to heal injuries, all the way for thinking that they promote longevity and anti-aging. Some science there is better than others. The ability of our body to generate stem cells tend to decline with age and conditions like irritable bowel disease or IBD are characterized by compromised gut function and intestinal damage. Persistent leaky gut issues can lead to broader systematic inflammation and other related diseases. But how can we naturally boost stem cell regenerative capacity? What we eat, basically what we give the gut to process in the first place, is an obvious place to start. Many studies have shown that an intestinal environment can be changed or damaged by diet. Interestingly, some previous studies have shown that fasting can enhance stem cell regenerative capacity in both young and old mice. This is an exciting hypothesis because it implies that lifestyle modifications can cause profound shifts within our cells. With that background context, let's move into the study that we'll be exploring and talking about today. The study is titled Ketone Body Signaling Mediates Intestinal Stem Cell Homeostasis and Adaptation to Diet was recently published in the journal Cell. The study was led by Omar Yilmaz at the MIT Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research. This new study explored how a high-fat ketogenic diet and or exogenous ketone bodies govern signaling programs in the body that maintain intestinal stem cell function. We know that ketone bodies like beta-hydroxybutyrate have signaling roles in the body and can help regulate things like appetite, metabolism, and neurotransmitter function. This study aims to provide new evidence that BHB itself may play a key mediating role in maintaining intestinal health as well. Do ketones themselves alone drive a lot of the metabolic and functional benefit of fasting in a ketogenic diet? Well, let's find out. Let's first take a look at the study design. The MIT study used a rodent model, and they used three different diets as the main interventions on the rodents. The first one was a ketogenic diet, the second was an exogenous ketone supplementation on a standard diet, and the third arm was glucose supplemented on a standard diet. So three main diet protocols. They also made sure to properly understand the gene pathways driving some of the changes. So the scientists focused on one gene in particular that was much more highly expressed in stem cells compared to regular progenitor cells. This was a gene known as HMG-CS2, and this gene encodes the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase, which is a rate-limiting enzyme for the production of ketone bodies. That is to say, HMG-CoA synthase is a necessary step to produce ketone bodies from fatty acids in the liver. Without it, endogenous ketosis can't occur. Keep this gene, HMG-CS2, in mind throughout this analysis. Essentially, with these three interventions, the ketogenic diet, exogenous ketones on a standard diet, and glucose with a standard diet, the protocol was set up to control for endogenous ketone production through HMG-CS2. And this helps confirm the mechanism of action as well as the role of ketone bodies themselves. This is a really great experiment set up to really understand the molecular and biochemical pathways driving the endpoints. All right, let's dive into some of the details with the exogenous ketone arm. So this cohort, Exogenous ketones were given to mice who were lacking the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase. These mice were created by using a knockout technique, which means that the mice were actually genetically engineered not to have this particular gene and thus not having this enzyme expressed. In these mice, the researchers have provided two different forms of exogenous beta-hydroxybutyrate. These are functionally very similar to the food-grade 
HVMN ketone ester that we commercialize. Now, these same mice are also subjected to intestinal damage through radiation in order to test how beta-hydroxybutyrate or lack of beta-hydroxybutyrate would influence the stem cell regenerative response to injury. The authors also wanted to know whether or not endogenously produced ketones achieved through a ketogenic diet could also enhance intestinal stem cell number or function. Intestinal stem cells, or ISCs, are a type of cell that remodels the intestine. And to test ketones' effects on ISC function, they fed these mice a ketogenic diet for four to six weeks. The mice were fed a glucose-supplemented high-sugar diet for four weeks. So that's the third arm. In all of the groups, they measured the number and function of ISCs, the protein expression of the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase in the intestine, serum levels of ketone body BHB, and the activity of different signaling pathways that are known to be responsible for stem cell differentiation and function. Now with the broad experiment laid out, it's time to really dive into the study's findings. One of the interesting results was that even in the absence of a ketogenic diet, it was observed that intestinal stem cells have naturally high levels of the enzyme HMG-CS2. This means that regardless of a diet, the cells themselves are pretty proficient at producing ketone bodies, and that in turn regulates stem cell signaling, and this even happened in the non-ketogenic diet mice. It appears that intestinal stem cells produce and use ketone bodies even with a regular diet. This makes sense because even on a regular diet, there is some maintenance of intestinal tissue. Importantly, when you knock out HMG, CS2 in the intestinal stem cells, the stem cell function declines. So again, this recapitulates that there seems to be a necessary role of the ketone bodies in stem cell function and communication. Now let's cover what happened when the exogenous ketones were provided to each strain of the mouse, those with and without HMG, CS2 gene. When mice that were lacking this gene and enzyme were given BHB, they experienced a partially restored regenerative capacity of their intestines after the radiation damage. In the mice not given exogenous BHB and still lacking HMG-CS2, significant intestinal damage was noted. The loss of endogenous ketosis via knockout of the HMG-CS2 gene did not eliminate the benefit of beta-hydroxybutyrate. That's an exciting result. What about the keto diet mice? After four to six weeks of a ketogenic diet, these mice had significantly elevated levels of the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase throughout their intestine and had enhanced activity of the notch pathway, a pathway involved in stem cell function and regeneration capacity. The ketogenic diet mice also had significantly greater numbers of intestinal stem cells and greater stem cell proliferation compared to mice fed a standard chow diet. The ketogenic diet not only improved the number of stem cells, but also improved their overall function. For one, the cells of the keto diet fed mice were more capable of forming into organoids, which are artificially grown masses of cells that resemble an organ. Additionally, the ketogenic diet enhanced intestinal stem cell regenerative output in response to the radiation damage to their intestine. Now, what happened to the glucose-supplemented diet? Unsurprising to some of us, this diet led to a reduced amount of HMG-CS2 in the intestine and reduced levels of BHB. Not that surprising. These results make sense because dietary glucose increases insulin and that, of course, shuts down ketogenesis or ketone body production. Long story short, these mice weren't in ketosis. And as a result, this high sugar diet decreased the ability of intestinal stem cells to regenerate by around twofold after radiation induced injury. Interestingly, this loss of function could actually be rescued by single oral dose of exogenous ketones. These results show that suppression of ketone production by glucose has a similar effect of knocking out the gene in the knockout mice, but that, that bad diet can be recovered by an exogenous ketone. What are the takeaway messages and implications from these results? One hypothesis that I see continually strengthened is that the ketones themselves are a key factor of why ketogenic diet works. This implies that exogenous ketones may drive much of the benefit of a ketogenic diet or fasting. That would be a big game change of how to best implement a ketogenic diet or fasting. We already know that BHB plays a signaling role in a number of different functions like appetite, cognition, 
physical performance and recovery. And this new data suggests that BHB also plays a role in intestinal health. Perhaps a ketogenic diet or exogenous ketones might help reshape the intestinal environment in profound ways. Whether this is actually beneficial is open science and has yet to be determined. Even in the absence of a ketogenic diet, this study showed that intestinal stem cells produce unusually high levels of ketone bodies without carb restriction. In an interview with MIT News, the principal investigator explained how ketone bodies are one of the first examples of how a metabolite can instruct stem cell function in the intestine. Our bodies therefore might use the changes in the levels of ketones in response to different dietary or energetic patterns to coordinate and adapt stem cell function to different physiological states such as starvation or high energy availability. Another point to reflect on is the role of diet. The ketogenic diet on one hand enhance stem cell capacity to regenerate. And on the other hand, feeding a glucose or sugar-driven diet prevented ketone body production and impaired stem cell regeneration. This raises the question whether a large reason for modern intestinal and poor gut health might be related to our own suppression of ketone production in our stem cells through diet. Could a diet of too much dietary carbohydrates cause a shift in our metabolic environment, which leads to impaired function of our intestines. If we think about this from an evolutionary physiology perspective, this matches a lot of what we understand from the benefits of fasting or a ketogenic diet. You have a short-term stressor, which implies a caloric restriction or a starvation state, and that makes the body kick off all these survival mechanisms like autophagy and like stem cell production. The new thing about this study, however, is that we found an effect in the intestine itself. The regeneration of stem cells sounds very good, but there is an important consideration that is, if you have overstimulation of cells, including stem cells, that might downstream lead to tumors and cancers. So that is a natural question to ask. Will the ketogenic diet and exogenous ketones stimulate stem cells to a level where you're potentially driving cancerous growth? To put this into context, there are some studies that suggest that certain types of cancer proliferate more in a ketogenic diet. There's also conflicting opposite data showing that a ketogenic diet can be a really beneficial nutritional adjunct to certain types of cancer or other types of cancer. So there's actually a lot more work to be done here. That's the beauty of science. There's always more questions to be answered. In conclusion, this study is a really nice addition into the corpus of data suggesting that ketones have a large role to play in human physiology and health. Whether through a ketogenic diet or through exogenous ketones, we might be enhancing our body's regenerative abilities, at least in the intestine according to this study. This could have profound implications for healing diseases related to compromised gut function and health. I want to open it up and hear from you. Have you personally experienced improvements in your gut health after changing your diet or moving to a ketogenic diet, please comment below or send a message to podcast at hvman.com with your thoughts, questions, and feedback. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's YouTube or iTunes, for weekly content. Remember, what you put into your body is the foundation of what you become tomorrow. Be thoughtful, stay scientific, and talk to you soon.